So, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Malena. I'm from Argentina. And I'm going to present some thoughts on how to uh, build a metadata catalog uh, based on the recommendations of the Argentina's national SDI. So, just so you have a reference, uh, Argentina is in South America and it's a really, really large country. It has 24 different uh, provinces or regional divisions. Uh, so it has many uh, SDI initiatives on national, regional and local level and they are all in different stages. So the national SDI works to build standards and to be able to publish all the geo data as uh, normalized as possible. And the National SDI is not an organization yet, it's a community and it has uh, two ways of, uh, it works in two ways, it has an assembly that governs it, but also it has working groups. And one of the working groups is the metadata work group. It and what we do is build the templates and the profiles for the metadata, but we also do uh, manuals to be able to build the metadata catalogs, and we did uh, best practices and recommendations uh, document because there was not much knowledge about how we should be doing the metadata and building the catalogs, and so we needed these best practices to push the meta, metadata building because no one wants to do it. It's boring for everybody. So one of the first things we say is you need to be able to establish a series of steps before starting to do the metadata catalogs and the documentation to know how your organization produces the geo information. And for that, the first things we ask is ask the right questions to be able to know how the geographic information and your database is structured. So these are just a few of the questions we wrote to be able to do that. There are many more, so what we do is just, it's, it's just a trigger to be able to think outside the, the the geographic information making process and think it as how we do document meta, uh, data. So once we know what we are producing, we need to match everything we need to document to the ISO. I'm sorry. Uh, so for that, we need to go to the ISO norm and see the UML model to be able to find all the objects and classes that match the documentation we need. And there's panic, because the UML, no one knows how to read it in the geographic information community. Uh, for programmers, it's easy, but people who do actually produce the data, they don't know how to read it, so it's really hard to read the norm. So once you have that, we have a national template we can use, and with that and the information from the norm, you can build your own template or, or templates because it's not always the same information you're going to document. You need uh, to document maps and books and pu publications and layers inside the maps, and it's not always that linear, and it's not always one kind of metadata you need to do. So for that, we have our um, template up in GitHub. Um, everybody can use it and implement it in uh, either the Geo Network or whatever catalog software they are using. And you have to touch the XML. And it's so, so ugly that no one, no one ever understands it. And there's not much software to be able to read it besides the metadata catalog software. So people panic, but it's not that hard. You can use the software that, like, like Geo Network that has forms and you can add it uh, via that, uh, the editor view, but it's not always as, it, it doesn't 
stay perfect as you add it via the XML because the namespaces for the ISO need to be perfect in order to be validated. So then you still have to establish the metadata lifecycle. Earlier this morning, uh, the people from Geocat were talking about the process of the life cycle of the metadata. This is really important, and I'm so glad they added this new feature to the new version of GeoNetwork, because it's really important for the editor to know they can um, do the metadata in draft, and then a reviewer can make sure everything is okay because we tend to be really lazy when we um, complete metadata. So we, we really need those steps to make sure the metadata we are publishing, it's really, really done and completed. And not only uh, harvest from the WMS, it's a common practice in Argentina, and that's it. And they don't do uh, uh, keywords or uh, document the contact information, it's really, really hard to make them do everything. So pushing them to write down the life cycle of the metadata helps them realize it's more than one step and you really need the, all the information. But people are going to try to kill you because they hate it. So something else that I saw in Argentina is that people try to they build their own metadata catalog and they use other organizations' layers as a base map and they add that to the metadata catalog without harvesting or without cascading inside the, the map server or the geo server. So that creates a mess because you have several metadata catalogs that have, like, for instance, the um, administrative limits of Argentina and they all have different po points of contact and different lineages and different uh, um, abstracts, it's a mess. So we are really, 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 really insisting on people to please, please, please harvest from other metadata catalogs or cascade the WMS. So no documenting layers from other organizations. And people, when you say harvest in Argentina, think of this. So they imagine I am in the field, like, with, the, with all the tools, but no, it's in Geo Network and it's really easy and you don't have to duplicate the information. So the other thing to take into account is I was talking about the different kinds of metadata you should be able to build in your organization because you don't always do only layers. Maybe you are publishing maps to print and they have inside many layers. So you have to document it that with the right hierarchy and granularity to be able to have everything documented because if not, you are missing a lot of information on how the map was built and when were the layers last updated. It's really important to take this into account and I think I have seen very few organizations use it and maybe not many people know about it. So it's a mess. It's uh, everything on top of each other. No one understands who's the father, who's the son, what's the granularity. OK, so then you have to talk to, with the legal department to be able to have the right license for your organization. This is really important because not all organizations have every data that produces public. Not everything is public. It's uh, some organizations, especially in government, have uh, data that has to be confidential, but maybe they need it in their, in their metadata catalog because it's going to be published inside a book, in a map, I don't know, but not the whole data. So you need to be able to talk to the legal department and have the right legal constraints published. And last, this is the part that everybody in the organization hates, it's the training. Because everyone wants to come to the training course because they get credit, but then they really have to build the metadata. And so it's important to create a metadata culture inside the organizations for people to stop being so lazy. Because you ask them, OK, I need the source, I need the bibli bibliography. I don't know how to say it in English, sorry. Um, I need to know when it was last updated. I need to know what the processes in the desktop GIS were, and they answer yes 
or okay, it was me. And well, I ask you ten questions. I'm 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 completing the form for you, but you need to answer my questions. Okay, apple, orange. They they don't know how to answer them. So creating a culture for metadata inside the organizations, we think it's really important. Because uh, in Argentina, there are not so many people that work on GIS. So imagine if that is reduced to three people in metadata that really, really know how to use it. Two people are here. <laughs> so it's a long run, and we really, really need to keep making an effort. So what? How do we do this? this um, in the national SDI, what we recommend is open source. Especially, we have been using uh, GeoServer, um, GeoServer, uh, GeoNetwork, uh, because it's the, it's the most complete. We have been using, some SDIs use GeoNode, but the problem with GeoNode is that the metadata is only the Dublin core, and you, it's not that easy to personalize, so, because we have a personalized uh, profile for the Argentina um, metadata, we need something we can really uh, uh, add a template. That's why I was asking about the QGIS uh, plugin, if we could add a template, because we need it to be a little bit, bit more flexible, but not to see all the elements in the ICAO, because people won't fill them. If they see 40, 50 elements, no one will complete the formula. So that's what uh, open source is important, because if you have someone who can dedicate a little bit of time, you will be able to personalize it, whatever you need, and make it easier for the editors to be able to make the metadata, like constraining the, the, the simple view so they don't have to see every time their general contact information, because it's always the same. Or maybe um, they don't need to see if, if, if it is UTF-8 or the ICO because they are not going to modify it. So you can create uh, different um, editor views to be able to simplify the completion of the metadata. So, what? Oh, that's it. <laughs> I took it a little fast. but. That's all we have for now. We have been working on people to really implement these recommendations. Um, but there are not many catalogs that are really worked on and completed in Argentina. That's what we need to do. But uh, I think it's uh, useful for people to think it this way first and then start making the metadata. Because if you don't think it this way, what you are doing is completing a formulary you don't understand about data you didn't produce and publishing right away and maybe two days later you have to modify it and it's or you duplicate it because you don't understand or you harvest re directly from the WMS and what happens in Argentina if you go to the national SDI is you will find so so many layers the contact information is Ptolomeo it's the standard uh, in GeoServer. Uh, when it comes, when you install it, Ptolomeo is the contact information. And so, so many layers in Argentina have been produced by Ptolomeo. So we need to, for people to be able to change that and realize they don't, they don't should, shouldn't leave that information there. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, will there be any questions? Hello. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is, the, do you have any special metadata profile which you use in your country, in Argentina? Yes, you we base, have I, I, I think you based on ISO 115? Yes. And the, what about the profile? Yes, we have a personalized profile uh, based on the ISO. Is uh, special for your just only country? Uh, I, I yes, mean not but it's only it's an extract from the ISO, 
And we no, have it no published in uh, no national elements, no, e no additional elements or something? No, 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 no. It's, it's the ISO, just an extract. What the national SDI says, it's the minimum amount of information required to, be, uh, to have a completed metadata. Okay. As you know, there are some regional profiles, North American profile or Inspire, something like that. Um, you, you, there you is a regional profile. It's the Latin American profile. It's built uh, with the Inst Pan American Institute of Geography and History, along with the National Geography uh, Institute from Spain. They have built a regional profile for Latin America, but it's also just an extract from the uh, 19115 ISO. Okay. Uh, what we have is a more detailed profile. We just mentioned the elements that are basic for us because without that information, the Argentinian information is not completely documented. Okay. But we don't have additional elements okay. and we, we just use that. Okay, you, you just you, uh, you, uh, only selected some elements, you mm -hmm. made some of them mandatory, something like that? Uh-huh, okay. yes, and it's all published in the National SDI uh, webpage. The name of the National SDI, it's... I, sorry. Is it accessible, your it's profile? Either, yes, it's accessible. All the documents, including the one I, wa I based my presentation, are in the IDERA webpage. They are in Spanish because we don't have other languages in Argentina. Okay. And we also have the template for GeoNetwork with all the folders and the um, Schematron files uploaded to the GitHub for IDERA. Okay. What about the best practices and recommendation documentation? Is it also there? Yes. Okay. Yes, Again, there's a document Spanish. that's called Buenas Practicas in Spanish. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? No? Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.